All right, in section 10.3 here, we're going to look at um, relationships and properties of chords within a circle. Um, we started our discussion on chords in section 1, and uh, we're going to kind of build off of that here in section 3. So first of all, um, it's important that you realize um, these theorems are, are you know, going to be useful in certain situations, and you're going to have to pick and choose when to use which theorem, but um, the first theorem of the section says that um, in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are also congruent. All right, so in other words, given this diagram, um, arc AB all right, and arc CD are congruent only if chord AB and chord CD are also congruent. Okay, so... Um, You'll notice that these this chord, okay, ready? Um, let me see here. Um, chord BC creates this arc, and chord CD creates this arc, and so that's kind of what we're looking at here—that relationship between those chords. So example number one says, in the diagram, circle A and circle D are congruent. BC is congruent to EF, and the measure of arc EF is 125. Find the measure of arc BC. Well, again, congruent circles. This arc, or I mean, sorry, that, that chord and that chord are congruent. Therefore, this theorem tells us that this arc and this arc must have the same measure. Well, if this guy's 125, then this guy's got to be 125. Okay, pretty simple stuff once you recognize the theorem and uh, um, realize which one to use. Okay. Uh, let's keep plugging away here. Um, the second theorem says that if one chord is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then the first chord is a diameter. Okay, so in other words, if we know that in this diagram that QS is the perpendicular bisector of TR, then that means that um, QS must also be a diameter of the circle. Alright, so again, two chords, one's a perpendicular bisector of the other, the first one has to be a diameter. All right. And this one just goes the other way. It says if a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and the arc. Okay, So in other words, um, in the diagram, this chord would be bisected, and as a matter of fact, these arcs would also be bisected. Okay, um, So if EG is a diameter and EG is perpendicular to DF, then HD is congruent to HF, and um, arc DG is congruent to arc FG. Right, exactly what I just marked in the diagram. All right, example two says um, use the diagram of circle E to find the length of BD. Tell what theorem you used. Well, again, this just goes back to this very simple theorem. Okay, we know that AC is a diameter because it's a chord that passes through the center. Okay, furthermore, we know that AC is also perpendicular to um, chord BD. So as soon as you know the diameter is perpendicular, it also has to be a bisector. All right, so if this length is 6, I'm sorry, my calibration's a little bit off here, but if this length is 6, then this length must also be 6. So um, the length of BD is just 6. I'm sorry, I take that back. Um, this piece is 6, and so the whole length of BD would obviously have to be 12. Okay, uh, and that's all we're looking at there, using this idea of a diameter being a perpendicular bi bisector. All right, ten points, uh, theorem 10.6, and again, you don't have to memorize these theorem numbers at all. Um, just be familiar with what they say. It says, um, in the same circle or in congruent circles, if two chords are congruent, um, I'm sorry, two chords are congruent if and only if they're equidistant from the center. Okay, so in other words, chord AB is congruent to chord should be CD, not CDF. So make sure you cross that out. Sorry about that. Um, those two uh, chords are congruent if and only if the distance from E to F is the same as the distance from E to G. And go back um, from um, earlier in the semester, we said the distance always has to be perpendicular, okay? So that's why in this diagram they're showing you, hey, this is perpendicular and that's perpendicular. Um, so these two lengths would have to be equal in order for, that, in order for those chords to be congruent. All right, so um, in circle F, if AB is equal to CD, which is equal to 12, find EF. Okay, so in other words, hey, the chords are congruent, so that automatically means they have to be the same distance away from the center. Okay, we're perpendicular, so we're good. So now we know that 7X minus 8 has to be equal to the 3X, and now you just solve them for X, right? You're going back to Algebra 1. So you get 7X 
equals 3x plus 8. Subtract your 3x from both sides. You end up at 4x equals 8, which means x equals 2. All right, and so that's all we're doing there. Um, it says find the length of EF, so make sure you answer that question. You plug 2 back in here. 3 times 2 is 6. That's the answer we're looking for. All right. Um, example 4 simply says if the measure of arc TV is 121, fi uh, 121, find the measure of arc RS. Well, again, these chords are congruent. Okay, so we have a theorem that tells us if the chords are congruent, then the arcs that they create must also be congruent. Okay, so if the measure of TV is 121, okay, uh, let's see here, not sure why it's not right, there we go, 121, then this other arc must also have a measure of 121 degrees. All right, and the last example we'll look at, example 5, says find the measures of arc CB, arc BE, and arc CE. Okay, so we're going through here, first of all, um, here's the diameter it's perpendicular. If it's perpendicular, it also means it bisects. It bisects the chord, but it also bisects the arc. So these two pieces have to be the same. Therefore, 4x, I'm not sure why my marker's not, there we go. 4x has to equal um, 80 minus x. Add your x to both sides. So you end up at 5x equals 80. Divide both sides by 5, so x in this particular problem equals 16. Okay. Now, find the arc of CB, or the measure of CB. Well, 4 times 16, so CB, the measure of arc CB equals 64 degrees. Um, the measure of arc BE has to be the same, so the measure of BE is also 64 degrees. And finally, it says find the uh, measure of arc CE, so the whole entire arc. would be 128. Okay, so um, again, these are some obscure theorems, some theorems that you've never seen before, obviously, um, and we'll continue to use them again uh, as we work through some more examples in class.